It was with much anticipation that the world waited for the first images from the James Webb Space Telescope. These conveyed the splendour and beauty of the universe we live in. Truly spectacular images captured the heart and imagination of the world. But in this excitement, a startling truth was being revealed, which is clearly showing that there are fundamental problems with the current theory, both in terms of the evolution of galaxies and the idea that the universe is expanding. Let's dive in and find out more. Planning for the James Webb Telescope started in the early 1990s. The High z Telescope concept would have a fully baffled large aperture infrared telescope that would recede to an orbit of three astronomical units. This distant orbit would mean it would have reduced light noise from the zodiacal dust. These plans were later revised and instead the telescope would be parked at the Sun-Earth L2 Lagrange point. Construction would start in 2007, but final completion did not happen until November 2016. In March 2018, it suffered a delay caused by the telescope's sun shield tearing during a practice deployment. Eventually, it was launched on the 25th of December 2021 and reached its L2 Lagrange point in January 2022. The first images were released on the 11th of July 2022 and have stunned the world with their beauty and clarity. To many, these images are just like high-resolution versions of the old Hubble images. But to many cosmologists, these images are not at all what they expected to see, and not what their theories had predicted. Eric Lerner recently published an article in the IAI News titled The Big Bang Didn't Happen, and discusses what he thinks the James Webb images really show. Now some of you will be familiar with Eric Lerner. I covered his plasmoid quasar model several years ago, as well as the interview I did discussing this and his plasma experiments. He is a strong supporter of the plasma universe, and has written a book outlining why the Big Bang never happened. This book was originally published in 1992, and since then he has written numerous articles, one of which was published in the Royal Astronomy Society, titled Observations Contradict Galaxy Size and Surface Brightness Predictions that are Based on the Expanding Universe Hypothesis. More recently, he published a paper prior to the James Webb Space Telescope turning on, outlining his predictions of what they would find and not find. I will link all of these down in the description. So what were the most important points that Eric Lerner raises in the article? He opens by discussing some of the recent published papers that were released as soon as the images started coming in. In fact, one paper published with the title Panic at the Discs, which is a tongue-in-cheek reference to the band Panic at the Disco. What this paper reveals is that there are up to 10 times more disc galaxies than previously thought based on the Hubble images, and that galaxy morphology changes less quickly than previously believed. James Webb Telescope shows normal galaxy structure much earlier than previously thought. This challenges the idea about merges being a very common process, and implies disk galaxies have existed in large numbers for a significant time. This means that the morphologies of some disk galaxies like the Milky Way have remained unchanged for over 10 billion years. And lastly, the paper points out that distant galaxies in the rest frame optical, despite their appearance in the Hubble Space Telescope imaging, are not as highly clumpy and asymmetric as once thought. The paper concludes that galaxy morphology changes less quickly than previously believed, and that the James Webb Telescope images show normal galaxy structure much earlier than previously thought. It is thought that the first galaxies were relatively small, clumping together from small building blocks bit by bit. Cosmologists have speculated that tiny galaxies grew up through colliding with each other, merging to become more spread out. They had expected to see badly mangled galaxies scrambled by many collisions or mergers, but what the James Webb Space Telescope actually shows are galaxies with smooth disks and neat spiral forms, the same as we see in today's galaxies. So if these galaxies were common in what they considered to be the early universe, it destroys the idea that mergers are how these galaxies evolved to be spirals. Another prediction from the Big Bang is that galaxies in the early universe should actually look larger due to the expansion of the universe. This might sound a little counterintuitive. The size you perceive an object to be normally only depends on its actual size and its distance from you. In the Big Bang, the universe is expanding. Add into this that they now also think this rate is accelerating. 
So if we imagine an object that emits light from two points, if the universe was static, the angle you saw the light separated by would directly relate to the distance between them and their distance from you. But if the universe is expanding, you need to take into account the fact that when the light was originally emitted, the universe was much smaller and hence took up a greater proportion of the universe's scale than the object would now. This means that if the Big Bang is correct, then as we look at older and older galaxies, they should start to appear larger and larger. So what is the James Webb Space Telescope revealing? Smaller and smaller galaxies. Even galaxies with greater luminosity and mass than our own Milky Way appear in these images to be two to three times smaller than in similar images observed with the Hubble Space Telescope. And the new galaxies have redshifts which are also two to three times greater. This is totally against the idea of an expanding universe and means that these distant galaxies must be extremely small to compensate for the expansion illusion. And by small, this would imply implausibly small. As an example, GHZ2 was identified in one of the papers published. It is far more luminous than the Milky Way and yet, based on their calculations, is only 300 light years in radius. This is 150 times smaller than our Milky Way. To put this into context, this would make it 600 times brighter than the brightest galaxy in our local universe. This puts its density at tens of thousands of times that of the present day galaxies. With fewer or no mergers, there is no way tiny galaxies could grow up to these high density beasts. The James Webb Space Telescope is equipped with many different filters to allow it to see in different wavelengths. This allows it to view the colours of distant galaxies. From this, they can work out an estimate of the age of the stars within the galaxy. This is based on the idea that stars age along what is called the main sequence of stars, starting out as hot blue stars and ageing to yellow and eventually red stars. The problem is that the James Webb Space Telescope images show galaxies that were supposedly formed only 400 to 500 million years after the Big Bang. Analysis of the light from these galaxies reveals that they have stellar populations that appear to be over a billion years old. Not only do they see these complex galaxies which have stars that predate the Big Bang, but you would also expect as you look closer and closer to the Big Bang event that there should be less and less galaxies and eventually none at all. Once more, the James Webb Space Telescope is throwing a spanner in the works. A recent paper published in Nature shows that galaxies as massive as the Milky Way appear to be common a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. Not only this, but the authors state that the new images show that the mass density of the highest redshift galaxies is at least a hundred times more than the theory predicted. How could these dense, large galaxies form so close to the supposed start of the universe and also be so complex? As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.